I have a value here, I have a value here, then I have a shock wave, the next value here, the next value here. When I'm trying to reconstruct the flux here, I'm actually using both sides, which is actually not physically correct. I should be only using one side to reconstruct the flux over here, and which side should I use? It depends on which direction the shock moves. If the shock is moving towards the right, then which direction, which average should I use i or i plus 1 to reconstruct the flux at i plus half? i, right. I want to look at the upwind direction. The upwind now is not the upwind of the characteristic, but the upwind direction of the shock wave. So the upwind scheme really looks at which direction the shock wave is traveling and uses the upwind direction to reconstruct the flux. Okay. And uh, uh, the sacrifice we are making is we will not get a second order accurate scheme in the smooth regions. So if I only use the upwind direction, so if I only use the value here or the value here, then I cannot cancel even this term, right? So, so I can only satisfy this condition. My a, either my a is going to be equal to 1 if the wave travels from the left, or my b is going to be equal to 1 if the shock wave travels from the right, and the other one is going to be 0. So I'm never going to satisfy the second condition. My scheme is only going to be first order accurate, but I'm satisfying the correct physics. Okay, so so we we did uh, we discussed uh, the central scheme, which is a scheme that is second order, but uh, produces uh, spurious oscillations near the shock wave, and we here are discussing a first order accurate scheme, but hopefully don't have the spurious oscillations, and. Uh, uh, the rest of this lecture and the next lecture, we will also be discussing how do we con how do we simultaneously satisfy a second order scheme and also uh, no spurious oscillations. Okay. So so here, let's uh, stick to uh, the first order upwind scheme. So the upwind scheme uh, looks at the speed of the shock wave and. Uh, uh, I hope uh, somebody still remember how do you how do I compute the speed of the shock wave? Yes, delta f by delta u. So here, uh, this is uh, basically if I have a scheme like this, I'm basically trying to compute f of u i minus f of u i plus one divided by u i minus u i minus uh, plus one. Right? This is going to determine which direction this wave is traveling. And this actually can be applied to a sh discontinuity and uh, uh, any other regions, because for finite volume schemes, if I treat the function as piecewise continuous functions, the interface between any two volumes is a discontinuity. The difference is that just uh, for smooth regions, it's a small discontinuity. For shock waves, it's a huge discontinuity. Right? And this formula can be applied everywhere. It's just uh, when there is a small discontinuity, ui minus ui plus 1 is small, then this is pretty much df over du, which is the speed of the characteristics. Right? When the delta u is huge, is the speed of the shock. When delta u is infinitesimal, is the speed of the characteristics. And numerically we also have to take a special case when we decide which direction to look at is that when ui is actually equal to ui plus 1 this is going to give us nine right not a number so or uh, we have to evaluate dfdu at ui if ui is equal to ui plus 1 okay so this is what the upwind scheme does. 